First off, before I start the video, let me tell you a couple safety related issues that you need to look for when working on your vehicle. First off, my vehicle is sitting on a slope. I do make sure the brake is set as well as chocks on the back tires. You can see right there. These right here, even if the brake fails, these will not let the vehicle roll forward. Also, when you are working with power tools, especially working around this with impacts and screwdriver or screw guns or anything, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. You might catch me every once in a while not wearing them. That's my bad. I'm trying to get better. My work requires them. So when I get home, I try to do the same thing. So, but uh, anyways, on with the video. Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. I'm Jill. And today we're gonna install our new bumper. So what we showed you last time was the four wheel parts bumper that we're gonna replace for this one. So this right here is the OEM plastic bumper. It's not your modular bumper. Uh, it is the plastic one, so I'm assuming that most of the people that wanna go off-roading either pick the modular bumper or replace it with something like this. This currently is the only one on the market. They do have a lot of other companies out there manufacturing them or at least designing them. They just do not have them out yet. They will not come out till 2022, probably second quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and we're gonna time lapse most of it but we will stop to show you and explain why we are doing things and what problems we come up with. Now, the instructions actually tell us about the OEM modular bumper, not this one. This one's completely yeah. different, so we are going through kind of blind. We kind of know what needs to go on with it and come off, but we'll show you just in case that uh, you guys are interested of what difficulties we ran into while we're doing this one. So we'll go ahead and cut the time lapse. We'll get everything out of the way and start working on removing this bumper, okay? Okay, so the first things first, we ended up having to take off the skid plate or the splash guard because we have to access stuff underneath the bumper. Now, the modular bumper shows a panel that's right here that you actually have to take a couple of screws out. I believe three or four screws that cover up these three bolts. Now, this side, I will show you exactly what it is. It's just a simple pull. Jill will pull it off for us. There is six clips and two alignment pins that go in there that will let you access the bolts to actually remove the bumper. Now, there are some other things I know that are gonna go on behind this that we need to look at once we get the bumper off to remove to be able to fit the other bumper on because the way it's set up and the, the uh, instructions, it's not this bumper. So that's be forewarned. This is a completely different bumper than the instructions actually show you. So we'll go ahead and cut back to time lapse. Okay, so the next issue we found out with this bumper is, so this one does have the lights on it, does have the fog lights on it. So you also have the harness, which isn't bad, other than it's ran underneath this piece right here. So this piece is removable. And it actually tucks into 
this right here. So these are the little clips to hold it. So you cannot get that out while this is in there. You do have to remove this. It has two screws on either side or two bolts on either side. And it has, I believe, four or five that are right here. So you have two right here, two right here, and then I think one on either end. So you have five or six small screws and then two 15 millimeter screws, uh, bolts, I mean, on the end. So we have to figure out once we get the other bumper in where we're gonna tuck that away and we're probably gonna tuck it back up in here somewhere. Try to get it out of the way. We'll find a place and we'll show you. Okay, the next step we ended up doing, so remember the wiring harness, we went ahead and unclipped it. There is a clip just up inside of there where you can get to. So if you're looking at the car, it's right up inside of this cavity right here. It just unclips, really easy. We don't have to tuck it away. We'll save that later on yes. for oh, yeah. a... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we will say, well, we're going to save that later on because we're going to use that to put the lights that go on the front of this uh, in there. So we're going to use the harness that is factory, has all connections. We don't have to worry about modifying too much. Okay, so these right here, the brackets actually hold the bumper on. They actually install this way. And there's a couple finger tighten nuts on the back side to actually hold the nut plate secure while you put the screws in to actually hold the bumper on. Now we're not doing this with the other one because they gave us these. So pull the bumper back a little bit. These right here install this way. It's hard to do this with one hand. Holy crap, I got it. So it installs this way. That way when you put it up there, it goes through these holes and then it's secured by those hardware right there. So there is three of them. You have one with a two stud combo and one with a single stud combo. Like that. They are held in by these, they just kind of slide over and hold it in place. That way it doesn't move back and forth. We'll go ahead and install those, install the bumper and show you the access points that we have to go to to actually install the bolts on the other side. So we'll uh, be right back. Okay, we're gonna do a little preventative maintenance for this. So I know later on we're gonna end up taking off these tires and rims and putting on larger tires, probably about 35s. Now, you can't run these with 35s. So before we put that bumper on, we're going to take this off because we don't want to have to worry about any kind of clearance issues trying to take off these bolts. For whatever reason, Ford put them uh, so you can undo them, so you can remove them basically straight up rather than straight down. Obviously, when they're working on this in the factory, everything's straight down for ease of them installing it but doesn't doesn't necessarily make it easy for us to remove so we'll go ahead and remove these while we have complete unobstructed access to it and uh go ahead and show you how to how it's done i'm sure a lot of people have seen it but i'll show you without anything in the way now i already did break them free they are fairly tight are fairly long so that's the length of them and you have two and all it does after that is just slide out that's it quick simple painless without the bumper in the way but Again, we're removing this to be able to install larger tires, preventative maintenance later on, uh, so I don't have to remove this if need be. I will go ahead and 
we've removed them now. So, okay, back to installing the bumper. Okay, first things first, we got the bumper in. Now, I'll tell you this right now, the very top bolt right up here on the back side is a complete pain in the ass to put on. The reason for this is on the OEM bumper, the plastic one, not the modular, uh, the modular bumper, you have this, the tow hook. Well, the tow hook for this one is part of this, which holds up your intercooler. Now, that being in the way, it keeps you from going all the way over. So you get maybe an eighth of a turn on the top bolt. That is a total pain in the butt, in my opinion. But it's doable. There is other ways to go through it. But you risking damaging the intercooler pipe that's actually going in there, going back. Especially if you slip and crack it. Or you're going to have to get a new intercooler, which is going to be fairly expensive. Also, what you saw Jill do earlier is install this piece right here. As you can tell, it's gray. You can paint this whatever color you want. We just left it gray because, well, our car is gray. So that right there is just a single plate with a couple 10, ten, in, millimeter. Uh, ten millimeter nuts oh. on it. And the last thing we got to do is actually install the covers for right here. Now, the Big Ben doesn't have the, uh, yeah, the, the obstacle sensor, the parking sensors for the front. We just have plugs. So here's the difference. This right here is the setup. I'm not going to pull the hardware out, but this right here is the setup per sensor. This right here is all you need to do when you actually don't have it. All it is is a plug. It just presses in. We'll see how easy. That easy. So Jill, go ahead and do the rest of them. Watch out for all that. We'll get that. Okay, so right now we do have to put the skid plate back on. We won't show that in this video because we've done it before in the other one. Uh, if there is any issues with it, we'll show you after all the shots of it being installed, including the OEM skid plate. So we'll go ahead and uh, end it right here, clean up, and come back after we install it. Okay, bye. Okay, with the bumper installed, we have a couple things we want to say. First off, we'll do the ranking. Ease of installation. Two to three for, you know, a beginner like me. So one being the easiest, five being the hardest. You say two or three. Yeah, two to three. I mean, it's I'd, like a smack dab in the middle, so 2.5. <laughs> so I'd say probably about a... Uh, one or two it's i wouldn't say one because you do have a little bit of issues with it, especially the bolts that i had said and to be uh towards the end i'd say probably about a two and that's me and that's just for the fact that the couple bolts and the fact that you need at least two people i don't see anybody putting this on by themselves it is going to be heavy awkward and you might damage the vehicle, the bumper, or yourself. hurt yourself, which is more important, is don't hurt yourself. Always get somebody to help you lift a bumper like this. Uh, it's not super heavy. It's just super awkward to try to lift up and put six bolts, three on either side, 
through the same way at the same time without damaging anything. Um, do you like it? Yes. I Absolutely. I don't think I'll have it on every Bronco I own because I do want to have it look a little different, but I give it a four, a solid four for whether I want to have it on another vehicle or not. Um, you? Do you want it on every Bronco you have? No, I like to have each one a little bit different. So, so about, about a four. four. As far as quality, it's absolutely wonderful. It is thick, it is solid. I do have to state a couple things here. These right here are absolutely thick as hell. They are massive, they're welded real nice on both ends, obviously. Now, as you can tell, we have the goofy splash guard right there. We did not put on the other thing because you guys haven't picked it out. To give you a little hint, it's a really big box, so I'll leave it at that. So if you guys wanna see the next part, pick the really big box, whatever number that is. And, you know, we absolutely like it. It's a wonderful bumper. Pretty bad, uh, pretty badass looking, pretty beefy. It does have a little bit of issues when you try to adjust it. Now it's gonna take a while. As you could tell when I was at the end, when I was going with my finger like this, I was making sure that it was even with my finger. The mechanics technique of precision tooling, your finger right there. So made sure it was even on both sides. Right there. So that is uh, perfect. So right now we're gonna go ahead and cut, uh, cut this short. We do have a guy who's mowing his yard right next to us and uh, we will hopefully see you next video. Hope you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and remember, pick the big box. That's the next part of this thing. Not that you have to, but it is a hint. See you guys later. Hope Bye. to see you next video. Bye.